All right, this is going to be the next video for the series of taking notes in your Bible. And this is the Common Man's Reference Bible that I'm using as my main Bible. This is the newest one I have. I have like two or three other ones. I got this one last year. And I just love taking notes in the Bible. I think it's one of the greatest ways to stay close to God and in your walk with Him. And I think it's just very necessary to have these notes written down in your Bible. So when you need them, they're there. And you don't have to go run here or there and everywhere else to get the notes for your Bible because they're, they're just all here. So this is the book of Genesis. I wanted to, I know I've already done an overview for the book of Genesis, but I wanted to show you what I think you need to have at the beginning of each book of your Bible. And this will also help you learn the Bible. You'll be shocked about how if you do this right here, it's going to help you learn the Bible better than you've ever learned it. Because a lot of people, they know things about the Bible. They know a little bit here and there, but they don't actually know the Bible. But here I'm going to show you what I think you ought to write before each book of the Bible. So here is my Common Men's Reference Bible. Like I said, this is my main Bible that I use. And then here is this new wide margin Bible that I also have to also show someone who just has a regular wide margin Bible. Okay, the book of Genesis. It's the book of beginnings. Uh, Genesis means the beginning. The author of the book is Moses. And I've got that written right here. The author of the book is Moses. As well as Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. And this is written sometime between 1700 and 1500 B.C. Okay, this book has... 50 chapters, 1,533 verses, and 38,262 words. And this book, if you can get this down, it's composed of 11 main stories. If you can get these 11 main stories down, remember where, what chapter they're at, you're going to know the book of Genesis very well. So let's look at these 11 stories. First you have creation. In Genesis 1-2, you see creation. You're going to see, why are we here? Where did you come from? Was God here before everybody else? Is God part of the creation, and, or is he just God, and he's here before the creation? He was here before the creation. He didn't use evolution. He made everything. He's why you're here. God is why you are here. And you'll see that if you read the first two verses, or the first two chapters of the Bible. In chapters 3 and 4, you're going to read about Adam and Eve. That's where the mess happened. That's where everything went downhill. You're going to see the first deception. You're going to see the serpent approach Eve. You're going to see the devil attack the Word of God as he's still doing today. Then in Genesis chapter 5, you're going to see the generations of Adam. And a lot of people say, you know, why does the Bible have all these names in it? They say, I can't stand reading all these names in the Bible. Well, think about it. Man is interested in man. A lot of times, uh, the older men at work will say to me, who was your dad? Who was your mother? Man is interested in man. They're interested where you came from, who your father was. And that's why these things are in the Bible. And it's just uh, it shows you how good God is at keeping a record of things. Imagine being someone at the great white throne judgment and they're standing in front of a God who is this good at keeping a record of their life, everything about them. It just shows you how great God is. And then in chapters 6 through 9, it talks about Noah, the story of Noah and the ark, one of the most well-known parts of the Bible. See, this is going to help you because a lot of people don't, don't know when these people were even alive. They don't know that Noah was before Moses. They don't know that 
You, you know, I heard this one girl one time. She said, who was it that baptized Jesus? Was it Moses or was it Noah? You know, people don't understand when the Bible characters actually lived. They don't understand the time frame. This will help you learn the time frame of the characters in the Bible. Okay, in 6 through 9, you have Noah and you have the ark. And in chapter 10, you have the generations of Noah. Why? Because man's interested in man. God's interested in man for some reason. Then in chapter 11, you have the Tower of Babel. And you know all about the Tower of Babel? They wanted to make themselves a name. They wanted to be great. They wanted to do great things, but the problem was they wanted to do it without God. So God had to confound their language. Uh, he told them to separate, but instead they got together. And so God has to come down and separate them. Then you got chapter 11 through 25. In chapter 11 through 25, you have the life of Abraham and Isaac. And it just great stories and great types of the Lord Jesus Christ, especially Genesis chapter 22, one of the greatest types of, of Jesus Christ in the entire Bible, when Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac, picturing God the Father sacrificing the Son. You have great stories in there. The life of Abraham and Isaac. Then 26 and 27, Esau and Jacob. 28 through 35, the life of Jacob, a rough character in the Bible. Uh, chapter 36, generations of Esau, because man's interested in man. God's interested in man. God keeps record of things. 37 through 50, the life of Joseph, the greatest type of Jesus Christ in the entire Bible. They say over 150 particulars that Joseph pictured Jesus Christ. And then I've got it wrote down, the seven main types of Jesus Christ, the men who are the seven main types of Jesus Christ in Genesis is Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. And that's how I have it wrote in the Common Man's Reference Bible there. I've got it, the got some of it underlined and highlighted that way I can quickly find what I'm looking for and there in Genesis you have seven pairs Adam and Eve Cain and Abel Lamech and Enoch Abraham and Lot Isaac and Ishmael Jacob and Esau Joseph and Benjamin okay so what's the main theme of the book of Genesis well just like every book of the Bible the theme is going to be Jesus Christ in some form and in Genesis, it's Jesus as the promised seed. Because in Genesis 3.15, let's, let me show you what it says in Genesis 3.15. Okay, Genesis 3.15. It says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his seal. That's the Lord talking to the serpent. And he's telling the serpent that he's going to get his head bruised. And the serpent doesn't want his head bruised. That's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ that does this. And you see this pictured all the way throughout the Bible. Even in stories like David hitting Goliath in the head. Pictures this. And the devil's doing everything he can to attack the seed. And you're going to see him attack the seed through the book of Genesis. For example, the first time is with uh, Cain and Abel. He moves Cain to murder Abel because Abel is going to be the one carrying the seed. But he fails because God just raises up somebody else to do it, and that would be Seth. But you're going to see this all the way through the Bible where the devil is trying to corrupt the seed so that the Savior can't come. Another example is Genesis 6. The sons of God with the daughters of men. That was the devil trying to corrupt the seed with those mixed marriages between the sons of God and the daughters of men. And you, you, you'll see that throughout the Bible. But that's Jesus Christ is the promised seed in the book of Genesis. That's Genesis 3.15. And in Hebrews 2.16, it tells you that Jesus Christ is the seed of, of Abraham. Jesus Christ is of the seed of Abraham. 
So that's the theme. And you can follow that theme all the way through the Old Testament. And in the book of Genesis alone, seven men carry the seed. Seth, Enoch, Noah. See, when Noah got on the ark, he, him and his family hadn't been corrupted by those sons of God. Remember, it said he was perfect in his generations. So he carried the seed. Then Abraham, the first Jew, Isaac, who was the promised seed, one of the greatest types of Jesus in the Bible, Jacob, and Joseph. Okay, the book of Genesis is also amazing because it has some of the most major doctrines in the Bible is in the book of Genesis, especially right here in these first few verses. The first one, salvation you find salvation new testament salvation in in pictured in the first few verses in the book of genesis and here i have the doctrines listed here in the common man's reference bible but to give you an idea about what i'm talking about <clears throat> notice it says in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void when you were lost you were without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep in you was nothing but darkness you were a child of darkness you were a child of disobedience you were a child of hell you were a child of the devil in you was darkness you were without form and void darkness was upon the face of the deep but then what happened when you got saved and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters when you got saved the holy spirit came inside and what happened? God said, let there be light, and there was light. You were no longer a child of darkness. You were a child of light. You had light inside. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. What happened when you got saved? God cut your soul loose from your flesh. He divided the light from the darkness. Now every time you sin in the flesh, those sins aren't applied to the soul like they were before you got saved. And there is a perfect picture of your salvation right there in the first three verses of the Bible. But what else? The Godhead. The Godhead is shown in the first few verses here in the book of Genesis. The Godhead. What is the Godhead? What people call the Trinity. I'm going to show you that here. In Genesis 1, 1 through 3, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So where am I seeing the Godhead? Well, look, it says, In the beginning God, there's the Father, created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, there's the Holy Spirit. So you got the Father, you got the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. So there's your word. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. God speaking, that's the word. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The Godhead, each member of the Godhead is eternal. They're all God, and they were all a part of the creation. That's what you see there. The major doctrines in the Bible are in the first book of the Bible. What else? Christ in the church. What do you have in, in Genesis chapter 3? In Genesis chapter 3, or not chapter 3, but chapter 2, it describes Adam and Eve. In Genesis 2, 21 through 24, the Lord describes how he made Adam and Eve. He took, uh, or how he took, or how he made Eve in particular. He took one of Adam's ribs and formed Eve. And that pictures the Lord Jesus Christ dying to get his bride because remember, Adam, a deep sleep was put on Adam to get his rib. A deep sleep, as in death, came on the Lord Jesus Christ to get his bride when he died on the cross for our sins. So you see that how Adam pictures the Lord Jesus dying on the cross to get his bride just like Adam was put into a deep sleep to get his bride. Adam was pierced in the side to get that rib taken out, just like Jesus was pierced in the side by the soldier when he was on the cross. So that's Christ and the church. You have Christ and the church. And then in Genesis chapter 4, 
what do you have? In Genesis chapter 4, you've got bloody salvation. A picture of bloody salvation. That's a major doctrine in the Bible because the blood is important. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is important. What happens in Genesis chapter 4 verses 2 through 5? Abel brings the correct sacrifice while Cain does not. Cain brought up the fruit of the ground and the saying is you can't get blood out of a turnip. And Abel brought up the firstlings of his flock. He shed the blood of an animal. And God accepted Abel's offering, but he rejected Cain's offering. That pictures bloody animal sacrifice. Without blood, there's no salvation. If they drowned Jesus and didn't shed his blood, then there's no salvation. He had to shed his blood. And then the next one. What's the next one we have? The rapture. That's in Genesis chapter 5 with Enoch. It says, Enoch was not, for God took him. That pictures Jesus taking the church. You see that? Genesis chapter 5. You have the rapture. A perfect picture of the rapture. Then in chapter 6 through 9, you have a picture of Israel being protected in the tribulation. And that's when you see Noah on the ark. Noah and his family pictures the Jewish remnant being preserved through the tribulation. So you have all these major doctrines pictured in the book of Genesis. It's an amazing book. And I believe these are things that you should have in the front of the, your Bible in the book of Genesis. And here it is if you want to maybe pause it and take some of those notes in your Bible for yourself there. And like I said, you know, I use the common man's as my main Bible because, you know, he's already got all these notes in here. He's already got all the references in here, 60,000 references. You know, a lot of people say, well, you can't just go by what man says. Well, of, of course not, but God did set up pastors, teachers, evangelists for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, you know. Why did God do that if he didn't want us to let men help us, you see? And you can get a lot of help from this. All these references in here. All these notes already in here. You know, 30 years of his study. Why can't I just start where he's left off? If he's already put 30 years in, then I can take, take off and start on that 30 years. And then when I've done this for 30 years, then the next person can take off where I left off. You know, he's still going. He may go another 30 years. But I can take off where he left off here when he put this together but this has just been a quick little overview of the book of genesis taking notes in your bible making your own reference bible and that's really what you're doing and i don't know if i've already said it but it's got 50 chapters 1533 verses 38,262 words genesis the first book of moses called genesis one of my favorite books of the bible so get you a wide margin Bible or get you a notebook and write all this stuff in it. And this one I'm using right here is the Cambridge Wide Margin Edition Holy Bible. I got it for cheap off eBay. Somebody put some notes in the book of Numbers and I guess they didn't like the notes that they took. I guess they see where they made it. I guess made it too big and they decided they didn't like that. You know, I'm going to overlook that, maybe use some white out on these pages that they've done this to, which, I mean, it doesn't look that bad. And when I get to numbers, I'll just white that out and put my own notes in there. But this is a really nice Bible. I got it for way cheaper than I would have bought a new one. And if you want to look at the common man's Bible that I'm using here, Hoffman... Common Man's Reference Bible, the Authorized King James Bible. Get you a King James Wide Margin Bible and take notes in there.